Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Welcome back, everybody, to episode 75 of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies. That is right. Tonight is t tonight is our diamond episode. Um, today is January 18th, 2021. I'm Bill, and I am joined, as always, by my yippee ki yay co-hosts, Amy and Jordan. Welcome, guys. <laughs> nice. I approve. <laughs> Before we get started, we want to remind you that the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is not a spoiler-free podcast. That means if there is something in the Cosmere you haven't read and are worried about spoiling, you might want to go read those first, then come back and join the discussion. Tonight, we are going to be continuing our discussion of Rhythm of War, focusing on Kaladin's plotline. For those of you who listen to the podcast recordings or watch the videos on YouTube, we do want to remind you that it's possible for our listeners to interact with us live via chat as we record each episode at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. We record episodes of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies every other Monday night, starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. So please join us and take an active part of the discussion. Oh, guys, it's been too long. I like talking to you. I miss y'all. <laughs> Jordan, I don't miss as much because, no, you know, he, he lives in my basement. No, he's, there. Hey. he's tried to get rid of me at several junctions. It's understandable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep trying to send him to the sump, but he's just sort of gone lower and lower in the basement. No, it's really weird. Uh, frankly, I didn't expect the basement to be, you know, uh, <laughs> variable, but here we are. Indeed. The Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is made possible by the support of our listeners and patrons. The show will, of course, continue to be free, but if you want to help us out, please head on over to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies. Even pledging a buck or two per episode will really help us as we continue to work to improve the show. Patrons get immediate access to our Discord channel, where you can talk about the show and the Cosmere with other listeners. It's an amazing community. We've got some great discussions going on all the time over there. You also get early access to bonus episodes, exclusive access to other bonus content, and other good stuff. This week, we want to thank um, Jeff Inn, who's a new patron. Thank you so much for your support of the show. We really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yep. We thank him ah. as well. It's awesome. Guys? So this is a big one. Die hard. This is one that everybody has been waiting for. And yes, die hard is. Uh, I, it's right. I it's don't applicable. know if anyone in his books has ever had such highs and lows in a single <laughs> book as Kaladin oh. in this one. Oh, man. You thought that it would like the other books would have already been like some pretty big highs. And then it's like, no, no, we're going to double down and go even more. Just yeah. Even people more. talk about how this is an emotional mm. book. Like this is far more. This is far more emotional than I think the other three books in different ways. Um, yeah, and like we got a lot of emotion in Oathbringer. I'll I'll give you that, and honestly, in every single one of them, this got felt grimmer. I feel the there's an in, there's an invasion. So, yeah, <laughs> I also think as part of it is the emotion in this one for a lot of characters hits a lot closer to home than a lot exactly. of the problems than. Then, you know, like most people in our, you know, in our community probably haven't dealt with, you know, being enslaved. Most people haven't dealt with killing mm -hmm. their family. Uh, what we have dealt with is struggles with our parents, dealing with overworking ourselves and, and just general depression. even. Yeah. And, and so isolation and things like that. So, yeah. yeah. Isolation. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Like this past year for. <laughs> people isolation really hits home mm -hmm. yeah so it's and just so, one of those things where i it's not i don't want to like minimize the other books they had a lot of emotion but you know i can't relate a, to dal to dalinar you know burning an entire city to the ground and killing his wife i can't relate uh -huh. to shallan yeah. having to deal you know murder her own father i can mm -hmm. relate to to kaladin 
just feeling so alone and have, feeling like he has to put on the face of Kaladin Stormblessed. Don't let to, them see. Like that, it, day, At yeah. one point I saw that, I was just like, oh gosh, that's just... Mm-hmm. I've felt this one before. Yeah. Um, and Kaladin goes through some rough, rough moments and he hits some really, really amazing moments of relief as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are the moments I think, like the moments where Kaladin was comforted are the ones that just hit me the hardest. We'll talk about those later in the episode, but just there were times in this book where I was sobbing just uncontrollably. Yeah. Uh, Jordan, you remember I came down after a certain point yeah, I told them. and like I had to change uh, the laundry over and I knew that there were tears coming down my cheeks and I'm just like, everything's good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Comes in and I was like, I have a feeling he just saw TN. Yeah, I, uh, I had to like hide in my bedroom so my kids weren't making too much noise as I'm reading. And so like I'd have to come out every once in a while and I, my eyes would be all puffy. And I'm like, I'm fine. Don't worry. It's all, it's it's all, all good. good. Don't, don't worry I'm, about it. Nobody asked. He's going through some stuff. Yeah. (laughs) Everything is fine. Nothing is broken. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Except my heart. So we've talked about a bunch of this already just because we talked about part one Mm -hmm. um, or most of part one. So, but let's go over it just sort of briefly. Okay. So we already know Kaladin snuck into Hearthstone to help liberate the people from the fused. Mm -hmm. Um, He's discovered bursts to light. The other Windrunners and the Cavalry come in uh, and, you know, there's a big fight. He fights both Leshwi and we meet Creepy Nightcrawler, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Lesion the Pursuer. Jerkwad. And, the defeated um, one. <laughs> what? The defeated, the defeated one. one. The defeated one, yes. yes. And friggin' Moash shows up. Oh. We hate him. Uh. Um, <laughs> he's, he's evolved to friggin' Moash is his full name now. <laughs> All the... Uh, yeah, all, the, all the stuff that goes down inside of the manor house, we know that Moas tries to convince Kaladin to, to kill, kill himself, himself. because yeah. apparently that's what friends do. My gosh. <sighs> well, it's Ugh. getting the the perspective of the interlude. We see why he's doing that. He, he truly believes that nothing can take down Kaladin except for Kaladin himself. And And that's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's a fat, but, like, oh. it's, it's horrifying, but it's also from a, from his perspective, fascinating view of this man. He clearly does have a lot of respect for mm-hmm. at the same time as he's, you know, trying to push him off the edge of a cliff, literally right. in, in, well, I guess technically literally in the dream scene. It's very confusing. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how to. Exp- I don't have words Imaginatively. for that. Um, so Simple. anyway, Kaladin goes through a rough spot. Dalinar has been picking up on his battle shock and eventually mm-hmm. tells him, "Hey, you need to step down. This is an order." And yeah. and Kaladin sort of has his first broken moment in the book, first of many. Oh, yeah. And this is where Adolin just oh, we love Adolin. seals his place as one of my favorite characters because. Mm-hmm. He's able to recognize what Kaladin's going through. And he's like, you don't need to be wallowing this. I don't understand exactly what you're going through, but I know that you this isn't healthy. And you shouldn't be alone right now. Well, and, and you know, and Kaladin's just like, you know, leave me alone. And finally, he just stares him down. And he says, look me in the eyes. Tell me honestly that you should be left alone right now. And Kaladin just looks and can't do it and yeah. you know Adolin's just looking and he's like don't lie to me he just he's just like if you lie to me I'll know mm-hmm. and it's just uh, he's the exact friend that that Kaladin needs at that at point mm-hmm. and I just had a brief thought I think Adolin might be a Hufflepuff I I could get behind that yeah anyway that's a different series entirely so yeah. we won't go too deep <laughs> down that rabbit hole uh, or that badger hole, I guess. Badger, badger, badger. Um, so anyway, that's that's kind of the point that we'd gotten to. I, I love, though, that just Adolin is there. He, You know, he doesn't push Kaladin mm-hmm. farther than he can be, but he doesn't let him wallow either. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't let him retreat from 
rea- exactly. the reality of the situation. Well, He's so like, this- you need to experience this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he doesn't. He doesn't try and. He's not trying to push him to be not himself. He's trying to force him to remember who he actually is. Right. The because that's the thing that's uh, when you're helping with someone who is deep in that mire. They. Uh huh. They. I mean, and this is something that Wit touches on later in the book, but they just feel like this is all that it ever is. That they they are their lowest moments. Um. Mm-hmm. Now that's one of the worst lies that anxiety and depression tell. Is this is permanent? This is always. Yeah. This is um, the only state of being, and, and it's not. The way that Brandon's able to capture that just still baffles me, considering, and he said specifically he hasn't gone through that himself. He's just known people who have. So the way that he, he captures it is just, yeah, it's amazing. It's, he's so, really good. So Kaladin is clearly upset, so he basically goes and starts talking to everyone he can talk to, because that's one of the things that he does. Um... So first he goes and talks to Relaine. Mm-hmm. And it's just this is just one of the most uplifting scenes, I think, in the book. Like, Relaine is pretty zen right now. Oh, he's super zen. <laughs> You're just like, things aren't ideal, but I'm okay with it. You know, I've, you I've, know, got, I've got a good purpose. I'm doing good things. I, I have my good vibe and whatever he's else teaching going. them how to farm better with using stormlight and, yeah, and drum and, rhythms mm-hmm. which is cool because that sort of introduces some other specifically the idea of rhythms in mm-hmm. this book yeah in, in navani's all those storyline yeah. which we talked about last time mm-hmm. um and it's interesting you know because he says i talked to yunfa i ordered him to try bonding you and relaine's just like no thanks I'm not going to force, I don't want a forced thing, you know. Mm-hmm. It's just like, dude, you're a better man than I am, Relaine, because <laughs> by the end, fly. fly. By the end of the book, he, he's had, he had three different spren uh, try, kind of try and bond him. Uh-huh. That's true. Yeah. I mean, one of them didn't want to. One of them w- reluctantly did over the choice that she ended up going with, and then the third one... Relena has gone on a nice little roller coaster ride of of Spren. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, he's uh he's earned it. He's earned his happy uh-huh. ending. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well. Although who knows where that's going to I mean, go yeah, there, there's he's not gone. So but we'll 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 talk about that next, next. time when we're talking about yes. Vimli and Eshenai stories cuz cuz that aspect, you know, he sort of follows along with them. Mhm. Um, but then Kaladin goes to talk to one of the few people who will talk straight to him, <laughs> who he really <laughs> respects. And it's one of the best yeah. scenes. I love He goes and scene. talks to Zale. I know. I remember when I read this one, when the preview chapter dropped. And as soon as I finished, I just went r- straight downstairs. I was like, Jordan, you've got to read this next chapter. No, Jordan, you need no. to read this next chapter. <laughs> I was in the middle of a lot of stuff and... He, he was begging me. I'm just like, I but can't right now. <laughs> just because there was so much Cosmere stuff going on. Oh, oh was that but, was that important? Yeah. Oh, yeah, just, just, just be glad there's someone you could talk to about. I My husband still hasn't read it, so I can't. Oh, why? Because he's busy. He's super, super busy, and it sucks. <laughs> mm. Tell him so. to stop. He needs audiobooks. <sighs> he needs the audiobooks. But I that, love that. That wouldn't make it any better, unfortunately. But yeah, I love that he, Kaladin comes to him and he's just like, you know, I I was wondering if maybe I could, you know, be a sword swordmaster with the, with the Ardents. And Zale's like, like, you no. think you belong with us? <laughs> Show me. Prove and it to me. just one of the most hardcore fight training <laughs> sequences. Bring it on moments. Mm-hmm. I'll be okay. And, he was and so happy to see that. you know, he's just he starts awakening and just you know he's cheating left and right because he's just mm-hmm. like this is what you're gonna have to deal with can you do it and and in the end he's just like you don't belong with us you know you don't belong with us where do you belong and Kaladin finally hates it he finally says I gotta go talk to my dad <laughs> it's like oh dang it I'm left with the one option I really don't uh-huh. want to do but no I don't have it in the notes but 
Uh, that's also where uh, Sill's interlude comes in. Yeah, and she's she tries to talk to the Stormfather and Dalinar about mm-hmm. seeing if they can help her understand. She basically wants to experience what Kaladin is experiencing when he's going through his depression. She talks about his two minds, mm-hmm. um, his dark mind and his light mind, and she compares doesn't... it to her own, you know, the the spren, the, the... the mindless spren mind, and then the mm-hmm. more cognitive. Honors. It's almost like cognitive, a wind spren and, like a wind spren and an honor, honor spren. spren. Yeah, so, like, that's actually two. not a bad way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah, it's and... that was interesting just because... Like, because I, it makes total sense that it doesn't, it's not something she can really comprehend. Mm -hmm. And I love, I mean, even though we're not talking about him, it ends up being a great Dalinar moment where just Dalinar shows how good he is at getting other people to, to understand their own, their own capabilities, that they can do stuff already. Mm -hmm. Just little dollops of wisdom. Here's some wisdom for you. And for you. Dollops of Wisdom. That sounds like an album title. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, and and it's really interesting, though, because over the course of the book, she does sort of start picking up. Like you see her, it's not just slipping back into sprint mode. There's some depression coming in and Mm -hmm. some like the distraction and the like it's it's very different. And I apologize about the train horn in the background but it's it's really interesting watching her experience that and i feel like there's going to be future repercussions of that cuz we don't see a whole whole lot of what that means we just sort of see her happening and then it just kind of fades into the background so i feel like we're going to see more of more to do with that in the next mm-hmm. book at least wouldn't be shocked yeah. and so she is the spren that we understand the most Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the, the fact that like some of that actual depression sort of bleeds through into her is very interesting. I like, I, I feel like there's more to it than that. I feel like it's probably because her bond with Kaladin is getting deeper because he's getting closer and closer to the fourth ideal, and so that's probably time. I think that's part of it, but I also think a lot of it has to do with the dampening Fabriel. Oh yeah, I'm sure that's a huge factor as well. Like because because it it was dampening, but it wasn't fully dampening, and it it was just sort of a weird. It just hurts for them, and it's, yeah. it's not. And so it's just, it'll be interesting to see where Syl is going through. Mm-hmm. What Syl is going through. Um. Yeah, and then so so Kaladin goes and, and talks to his dad, and finally agrees to try and be a surgeon, kind of. Something that was interesting in just because. One thing we see is, one, Kaladin is a good surgeon, and he does enjoy healing people. Like, this isn't something where he's, he, he, you know, he never loved surgery. This isn't like the the father who tried to push their sons into some sport they don't love. This is, like, right. Kaladin does enjoy surgery, and it makes mm-hmm. him feel alive. Um, not quite the same, not the same way a spear does, but it does make him happy. And so it's interesting when he um, when he's struggling with, you know, what he wants to do, that he's going through this um, because we see that he is someone who likes to try and heal and. uh, But he'll you know, he can kill and he can heal because there's a Mm -hmm. line in one of the uh, epigrams that uh, it's say Zed talking to to wit. Where he oh, says yeah. he's looking for, he, you know, he needs to find someone who's good it's at his both. His balance, yeah. And to which mm-hmm. I'm just, and I just, don't, I was like, that's kind of a character that's doing that. Are you hinting at something here? Hmm. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm all about, you know, if Kaladin becomes the, ch- somehow becomes the champion of Seizen. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's referring to wax in that because it's not yeah. heal, it's preserve. It's, I thought it was protect, protect. Or, yeah. Protect and some like protect destroy and destroy, and like and that, that um, and that's wax. Yeah, it's. I'm, a, I'm pretty sure that that's wax. It's a good mix of both. Mm-hmm. Both could fulfill. It. Now, I, I would prefer if it was wax, just because that fits that more fits. Uh, thematically. But 
Yeah. It was just one of those things yep. he said that, and I was just sort of like, wait a second. <laughs> the fanfics will come. Well, the other, the other problem with uh, Kaladin becoming a surgeon is he's becoming a surgeon under his father, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and his father completely refuses to accept the, the violence, other part of Kaladin. That violence is an option for things. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. for Kaladin to work under his father, it's like cutting off a part of him. And mm-hmm. and, and that's kind of why you know you, you see Liren who's super excited about it. And he's because and, in Liren's mind, it's my son has seen the light and he's coming over. And for Kaladin, it's, it's like, I can't do this part, but that doesn't mean it's not a part of me. And, mm-hmm. and so there's just sort of a disconnect between the two of them. Yeah. It's, it's not accepting all of Kaladin. It's just the part that he wants to accept. Mm-hmm. Well, it's always so, been a problem. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I love that this moment is like, I I always loved Teft, but this moment where the army leaves and then Teft shows up in the clinic and he's like, (coughs) see, I got this cough and I can't go. I have to stay behind. (coughs) (coughs) Because he's not leaving Kaladin. I'm just like, Teft, you are wonderful. And I just like how Kaladin sees it. Just he recognizes what a good sergeant is. Mm hmm. My favorite part just, about that is Teft pointing out all the eligible women who are making an excuse to come see Kaladin. <laughs> it's like, you didn't notice how many young ladies are coming through just oh, to dear. see you? Yeah, yeah. Well, and Adolin points out, he's like, you know, now that I'm married, you're essentially your Thero's most eligible ba- bachelor. <laughs> And Kaladin's like, oh, he's like, oh, because oh, all of no. his other dating attempts have not gone well, it sounds like. Oh, man. Yeah, poor... Uh, <laughs> I, I feel bad for the poor shippers who really wanted him and... Uh, and Shalon. No, Le, uh, Lynn. Lynn to get together. And it happened, but off but screen it and it crashed and burned. I was like, man, I kind of want a flashback scene where we could just get just a snippet of it. It'd be nice. Just, just like that little. That was Brandon just saying, we got to ship that. We got to sink that ship fast. <laughs> Hmm. But um, but yeah, just the fact that Teft stays behind and he's just like, you know, you need me here more than anybody needs me on that battlefield. So I'm not yeah. going anywhere. And then the two of them basically progress mental health medicine. I know, like by steps. hundreds of years, just immediately Yeah, <laughs> when they go out and they because they're trying to find there's like a lady, isn't it? That like wants to find her brother or her dad or something there was there was a refugee, a refugee. Um, from from hearthstone yeah and who, they want to who would, they want to find somebody they find a guy Nora. well no he like he he was a refugee from hearthstone oh. and they didn't know how to treat him so they sent him to to the ardents mm-hmm. and the ardents are very antiqu uh, have very antiquated medical policies where they think you know too much stimulus will will agitate them and so but they just, just stick them in the dark. And then it shuts them down even worse. And I love how Kaladin, he's, he hates the whole, you know, Lord Radiant stuff. <laughs> but at this point, he's just like, uh-uh, I'm going to use this like a cudgel. No, I, I thought it was Teft who's like, really? You're going to do this? And he's like, boop, light on. Okay, we gonna, you going to let us in now? <laughs> like, let me in, okay. <laughs> uh, and it just, I lo- he, he ends up making a focus group. Mm-hmm. He's just like... Talking to people helps. So we're going to talk and it'll help yep. me too. Cause I'm, that was the other thing is that he sees himself as one of these people and Liren refuses to. Yeah. You know, he's just like, well, you're not part of I that. am you're broken not, this same way. He's like, Oh no, you're not dad. <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> yeah. And it's just a really interesting conflict that mm-hmm. he, but I love just seeing that he starts doing that. And, really it does start working until uh-huh. Raboniel comes and mucks everything up. <laughs> yeah. All that fun stuff. Um, so I thought this was a really interesting concept that Brandon introduced where by muting the capabilities of Stormlight to such a degree that they actually lose consciousness. Yeah, they've gotten so dependent on it. 
like I don't know if it's they've got so dependent on it because people of the fourth ideal are able uh. to to resist. So, but it's it's it's. It's, I think it's just sort of it's become so interwoven in them. It, it's a high pass filter. People who are below a certain threshold can't get through. And it's only getting rid of nine of the frequencies of stormlight, essentially, mm -hmm. because the one they can't get rid of. And it makes total sense because it is the one closest to honor himself is cohesion. Or not cohesion, uh, gravitation. It could, except that. It only gets one of uh, Lyft's abilities as well. But Lyft yeah. is a weird edge, literally an edge case. <laughs> she uses, she's using life light, so it makes it totally different. Yeah. Right. Part of me wondered if the ability that she was able to use was pure cultivation. And so maybe it's just the hybrids that have been. And that's what I, I think because of uh, what she is. She's just, mm. she's just a weird case that mm -hmm. is difficult to really explain with uh, any other way mm -hmm. other than lifts weird and always this has been and, and always will be. That's just how it is. Yeah. Yep. Now the, yeah, the fact that lift um, and lift is involved in Kaladin's story. So I think talking yeah. about her, this is the right yeah. place to talk about her. Um, the fact that she uses a different kind of investiture is just sort of a, Oh, that Oh, that's how lot. it works. Yeah. <laughs> Finding out finally why she is so strange. Mm -hmm. Well, and now we know that there's like, there's three base types of investiture. And now there's the hybrids of investiture. And, the just, and then there's the inverses of the those types of investiture. I yeah. think I almost need to have like charts on my wall for like allomancy. <laughs> and then get some red <laughs> strings. And, yeah. Put these ones mixed together and make that. Because... I can't keep them all straight. There's just too many. Yeah, but and they're awesome. No, with that, with with her chapter, just the fact that she feels so betrayed that she uh, she keeps growing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, heartbreaking though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The the where, where she talks about she's why. like I didn't want to change because I always wanted to be I was always her little girl and I always wanted to be it's just like oh rip my heart out why don't you Brandon. <laughs> It's just I can't really talk about it because it's I'm just gonna cry. And every, yeah. Everyone in this store, everyone for some reason is incredibly broken in some way. Yep. Mm -hmm. But just, you say incredibly broken, they're also broken in an incredible way. Yes. Yes. Well, and it's what lets the power in. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And and it's with with Kaladin, it, his relationship with Liren. Uh, I don't know if anyone has listened to the most recent World Hoppers Guide episode. Mm, uh, the, Ar Arian one. tackled the relationship with Liren and went pretty, pretty in depth on it. Thought it was pretty good. Um, yeah. What I love about that relationship is just that it's, it's so real. Like mm -hmm. the, it's, it's the father who's trapped between trying to protect his son, trying to help him grow, but also trying to make sure that he's not making mistakes as he sees them. The son who's trying to go his own way and trying to make something his own. And they just, they don't agree on something. But still wants his father to be proud of him. Yes. And it's just, it's a, it's a, such a complicated relationship. Mm -hmm. But it's such, it's such a good, uh, mm -hmm. like, real look at things. And how at a certain point, like, it's just like, because Liren is so dead set on, we don't do violence. We don't do violence. That even when violence comes knocking at his door, he refuses to do it. That's just not who Kaladin is. And that's mm -hmm. the part he's, not he's stand by. Yeah. And he, that's the part well, that he's always struggled with. Well, and the other thing is that Liren, you know, tried fighting back with Rashon and ended up just so broken by it because he lost both of his sons in the end of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he's a different person even now than he was when Kaladin was growing up. You know, both of them were strongly affected by the, those events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Liren tends to hide a bit more now because fighting doesn't turn out well. He's learned. Yeah. It's all relative. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is one person's experience doesn't negate the others. And that's the part that in the end, that's what him and Kaladin come to. They agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. Now that said, it was really interesting. The scene where Kaladin kills the, 
the fused in the clinic. Mm-hmm. And Liren just starts, you know, chewing him out and just Freaks freaking out. out about it. Liren, it, it was really interesting to me because, so I don't feel Liren is an irredeemable character like some people do. I, you know, there are people who are saying he's worse than Moash and I'm just like, you're just wrong. No. But what I will say is the line, that, one of the lines that he used was, I took an oath, you know, never to harm anyone. I was like, you are destroying your son right now with your words. You are shattering him and doing more damage than you would have, than, like, than you've ever considered doing. And I think just he didn't get that. And I think that's one of the things that he realized later is, is and, and started to get is, oh, oh, this is important. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's one of the reasons I was furious is that he was actually one of the ones who was harming Kaladin. Um, like no one else could. Yeah. Like yeah. only Liren had the capability of, of doing. Mm-hmm. Well, and the other thing that um, this is interesting with is because Liren, because of the nature of when Kaladin left in his life and then disappeared and then miraculously showed up again, mm-hmm. he never saw his son truly grow up. Mm-hmm. His son was, yeah. was what, Kaladin was what, 14 when he left Something to go to like war? That, yeah. 14, I think 15. Like he was just barely coming into, you know, being a teenager. And mm-hmm. when he comes back, his son is a stormy night radiant, you know, and <laughs> just all this other stuff. But he never saw that. So well, part of it is also the first time, he's Kaladin's still his boy. Yeah, the first time he sees him, Kaladin is the captain of Dalinar's guard. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> there, there's a whole life that Kaladin has lived that Liren didn't get to see. And, and you can tell it hurts him too, but not because mm-hmm. he missed seeing it, because he knows the pain that his son went through. But he doesn't understand that pain yet. He yeah, refuses I mean, it's, it's to see it. It's on his forehead. Yeah, you know, the sash brand. Yeah, and uh, and which becomes very poignant for Liren later in the mm-hmm. <laughs> in the story. Um, so yeah, so Kaladin takes Taft and hides, and this is where Die Hard begins because he's yes. basically hiding in the air vents and <laughs> and you know running guerrilla missions and, Nooks and just and hit and run night. and picking him off. And in the meanwhile, he's having odium induced nightmares, and oh, he's gosh. and he's just he's just being wrung out. But yes. but every time duty calls, he gets up and he's he just like, well, time to be Kaladin Stormblessed again. Yeah, and so he's physically exhausted. But every time he tries to sleep, these nightmares come. And so he's not so, getting rest. Yeah, so it's just even worse. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just... And so he's communicating with Navani now through the sibling, through the, the garnet veins, which th- that's one thing that kept coming, kept hitting me is it kept talking about these purple or violet things. And in my mind, garnets are red. Apparently there are different colored garnets, but there's it, like it threw me off so emeralds. much. Like there's, there's, I've, I've learned like jewels are not always the one color you think they are. Like it's, it really I don't threw me off. I am not under, I don't understand that. I'm yeah. sure jewelers do. But so. you know, so he's able to communicate with Navani. Unfortunately, Raboniel has tapped the wire. Yeah. Uh, Raboniel. Oh. I love this character, but oh, she's infuriating. <laughs> Um, and so basically Kaladin's running around trying to secure each of these little fabrials that are powering the shield around the pillar in mm-hmm. the basement that has all of the gemstones. Meanwhile, he gets um, poor, poor man's, uh, flying. Yeah, oh my gosh. With the wrist thing. That was awesome. When, when Navani first started experimenting with that, I'm just like, Navani's invented Spider-Man. And and then you give that to Kaladin, who knows how to use these abilities, kind of, but it's not quite what he's used to. Oh, it's brilliant! I love it's absolutely kinda, wonderful. I kind of got a Batman vibe off of it more than Spider Man, but I could, I could see either one. Yeah, I just love as he's trying to learn it, and then he goes crumpling into the wall, and Sills just like, <laughs> "Wow, <laughs> that's embarrassing!" Right there, and he's just like, "Shut up, shut up, shut up." <laughs> This is unnatural. I don't like it. Well, and just the whole because he's so like it actually is kind of to his benefit in this state because they try and fight him and they're very used to fighting radiance and so 
they've seen it, you know, that before. But this herky jerky, you know, <laughs> almost drunk flying, they're not used to that. And I it's like it's like oh, what is that martial arts style the drunk like, drunken fist? Drunken fist, yeah, like where it's like you just can't predict their movements uh-huh. because well, it's, it's just so off. He he's trying to buy time. Leshri, let's fight, let's fight. Okay. <laughs> she starts let's, fighting let's, and she's like, What is going on? Yeah, well, it's I, like, um, you know, playing somebody who's new at a, at a game like Smash Brothers mm-hmm. and not being able to beat them because they're doing it wrong. Because they're doing it their own and, and so you don't know how to predict what, they're, gonna what do. they're doing because they're just sort of button mashing and you're just like, no. That was me as a kid, a button masher. Still sort of am. I did, I did like... That like his first fight when he he pulled out the device, I think it threw. I don't remember if it was the pursuer or if it was Leshrigan, and they're like, "Wait, you shouldn't be able to fly at all." So what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that moment of shock there. The that other part awesome. that's hilarious is when you find out they're spreading the propaganda throughout, and it's like, "Oh, he's not mm-hmm. really flying," and everyone's like, "Whatever, it's Colin and Stormblast. He's totally flying. He's totally flying." <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, meanwhile, it's like, no, literally every other sentence of it was the propaganda. That was the real sentence. Kaladin has no respect for your silly rules, he does laws what of he's physics, or but, but the, whatever you call it with the, <laughs> with the vestiture. The thing I love about it, though, is it forces him to start working on understanding his gravitation surge better. Mm-hmm. Um, or it's, it's, it's one of the cohesions, isn't it? Um, <sighs> gravitation. Is it, is that what I thought? Oh, you changed no, the oh, name no, cohe- of the surge. Sorry, gravitation is the is the the surge that lets them fly. Um, cohesion is okay. Which one is it? Strong or soft? I'm trying to remember. No, that's connection. That's axial connection. Uh, or are those the same thing? I'm forgetting now. Well, there's two types. There's two types of suggested to us. It's not adhesion, is it? Uh, just one sec. I'm trying to look it up. Yeah, adhesion. I think is right. Thank you. Yeah. I'm like ah, stickiness, but yeah. So he's because he's been so reliant on gravitation, he starts playing with the quote secondary power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he can't rely on the one that he's been relying. It's on. It's the so one that he, he shares with bondsmiths. Yeah, because the bondsmiths have the two things that connect things, both the, mm-hmm. the soft and the strong. Anyway, mm-hmm. the thing that is so he has he's being forced to use it. It reminded me very much of. Vin's training when she's having to first learn how to use the non-pushing metals because those she's she gravitates towards naturally because she understands mm-hmm. those mm-hmm. and then Kelsier forces her to go learn under the uh, the other masters and mm-hmm. she's learning you know that maybe there's some other you know ways to do this and he's learning it and it's quite impressive to see him uh tr- you know finding ways to do things that he wouldn't have before. Yeah, because he flying is such a powerful thing that by itself you don't need it. Right. Well, I mean, when you can fly, why would you bother sticking things to something else? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just it is great is I mean, and it leads to the most gruesome kill Brandon has ever written. Oh my gosh. It was so satisfying though. Oh yeah. It really well, well because you know the the pursuer Lesion, whatever his name is, creepy nightcrawler, Defeated has been one. chasing him around the. Uh, he he's said, been chasing him all over your Thiru. He's a bully on steroids, and he, he won't really shut thousands up. Thousands and thousands of years, bully. He won't shut up in every he confrontation. He's just, oh, I'm going to do this thing, and you're just sitting here, <laughs> just like, would you shut up and play the game? Why are you typing on your keyboard? <laughs> Well, and then, you know, let's step back because there's a moment we have to talk about <laughs> that, you know, that precedes that was Vire and Teft. Oh, there's so many moments. There's still there's oh, moments gosh. in front of that too, though. This was a hard one. It's yeah. one I saw oh, coming well, from miles away. Brandon has I, never I telegraphed didn't. a character death like this, where it's just when we get mm-hmm. that one Tef perspective right before where he's talking to his spren and just talking about, oh, man, this is so good and everything's great and retirement's only three days away. Oh, no. And you're just like, My, oh, no, I, you're so dead. I I didn't pick up on that, but I think I got oh. too caught up in, like, following the plot and, like, I got I to gotta, mm-hmm. I gotta get through this. And then it was as soon as it was 
spam in my face. I was like, oh, oh no, 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 can't have it. Yeah. But just the line that um Tef says that he says was um oh gosh, what was it? And he Who died yet, down. Yet, yet full have of hope. Copied. It's like confident and somehow still full of hope, Teft died. Oh, it's just oh and just that's the the, mm-hmm. the most blunt Brandon has been with a character. Like he's just like he used the words Teft died. It's like this isn't a matter of check for a body, you know, there's something it just the words Teft died showed yeah. up and it just it was powerful. I had to put the book down for a second after. I oh read that. gosh, it was it was just unbelievable. That said, we do need to step back a moment before that. Yeah. Because we were talking about the nightmares that Odium sending Kaladin. Mm-hmm. You know, and they are beating the snot out of him. Oh, like every horrible thing that could happen is on steroids and it's happening mm-hmm. in his dreams like every single night whenever he's sleeping. And it's just And this brutal. is another moment though where I just absolutely adore wit. Mm-hmm. Hoyd. Hoyd is my favorite character, and these moments <laughs> are why. Well, and you want because obviously we don't know the mechanics of how he's doing this. Um mm-hmm. but the thing that's interesting about it is because Odium's the one sending him these nightmares, you got to mm-hmm. think there's some level of risk for Wit to oh, absolutely to be doing this. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, we don't know the the mechanics of anything, so may, maybe not. Maybe Wit knew that. No, I, I've got this. It's fine. Um, but I have but yeah. to think that there's some there's some risk to it, and so he's probably because otherwise, I feel like he would come sooner. Whenever, yeah. Hmm. But yeah, he you know he reaches just pops in and just sort of yoinks him out of the nightmare, and he's just like, "Nope, come with me," and and grabs him, and then we meet his friend. I love his friend. And she is absolutely magnificent. What was her name again? I I always forget. I'm blanking on her name. Oh. oh. Why am I blanking on her name? It's oh. It's not testament. It's like right there at the tip of my tongue. Yeah. I'm looking it up because this is bugging me now. Wow, we probably look great to our audience. It's like you, you have a podcast and you don't remember which Sprint's name. There's but so many she, names. Design, design. Thank yep, you, Shia. Thank you. Um, oh, man. I just, she oh. is wonderful because she's just absolutely ridiculous. She just, you know, she's I'm so irrational. And, <laughs> and she's a monster? spoiler. Well, I, and, and, and I love that Wit's just like, no, you can't spoil that. She's like, that's dumb. Here's the end. <laughs> Just it's the just number of so, things she's like, that's stupid. <laughs> it's she's just so wonderful. Um and she she just plays off of Whit. She and Whit play off each other so well that it's just like, how did we how are we enjoying Hoyd so much without this duo? I mean, What's well, she just enhances everything about him. Well she's mm-hmm. she's his version of uh oh dang it, I forgot their their names as well. Uh the the lord that we Good like books. who pretend who's eco, the economic one who pretends to be like he doesn't care or pay attention and his his mistress that won't marry Sabariel? him Sabariel and Sabariel Sabariel what's her oh, name Polona 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 like that's sort of their dynamic like they have this mm. they have this 90s sitcom couple dynamic <laughs> where uh-huh. he is this classic BSer and she's just not, calling him yeah on just it. calling <laughs> him on like, it constantly nah. Mm-hmm. And he's just, but she's also very, very. She's still got that that silliness spark. that Pattern yeah. has. Mm-hmm. You know, very, very childish or childlike, yeah. and just just delightful. Like if, it's one of those things. If you're gonna have a sprint for wit, though, you gotta hit it. You know, you've gotta, gotta get a home run perfect, on this. Yeah. And Brandon did it. Like I'm, mm-hmm. uh, I'm in no way is w- glad that Elokar's dead. At the same time, Elokar wouldn't have been able to handle this sprint. <gasps> <laughs> oh no! Poor El- Elakar could not she have, have handled her. Him. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so he tells the story of the dog and the dragon, mm-hmm. which Brandon's talked about doing and having Isaac do children's books based on Hoyt stories, and I would love this one mm-hmm. because it's so touching. I love that he gives him the fake ending of he's like, "Oh, I'm an utter failure." The end. <laughs> And Kaladin's just like, what? 
<laughs> it's like I was into that. You can't know. It's not. It, rem- it reminded me of the Princess Bride. The you're messing up the story. Now get it right. Who kills Humperdinck? He needs to die. And he's yeah. just and he's just like, okay, here's the here's the real ending. He says, I, I'll bet a dragon never had it so good anyway. And Kaladin is still emotional. And he says, it won't be like that for me. You told me it would get worse. It will, Wit said, but then it will get better. Then it'll get worse again, then better. This is life, and I will not lie by saying every day will be sunshine. But there will be sunshine again, and that is a very different thing to say. That is truth. I promise you, Kaladin, you will be warm again. And I was sobbing at this point, just absolutely sobbing like a baby because... Mm -hmm. I knew what he was talking about. I was going through one of the hardest points in my life at that same time as I read that. And it was just exactly what I needed to hear. I've gone back and read that paragraph at least a dozen times since finishing the book. It's just absolutely beautiful. I love that sentence. You will be warm again. It's just so hopeful. And I, it's not sugar-coated. He's, no. You know, it's like, it will get worse, and then it'll get better again. That's just how it goes. Well, but you will be warm again. There's also something poignant about Hoyd saying, uh, this is truth, given what order he has joined. Mm-hmm. That yeah. That's part, yeah. part of his O's is he has to speak truths. And it's right. just one of those things that it is, it's just very solid. And not to bring the the mood back up after you know such a solemn thing. I loved this just right before that, where Cal, when Kaladin calls him on, and it's like this is stupid. You always pre- say that like there's no point to these stories, but it's there's always a point to these stories. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. like it, you're telling How them for a reason. How dare you? How dare you? I am an artist. There's no <laughs> point to art. <laughs> it just simply is. <laughs> it just, just exists. I love it oh. so much. Okay, so Vire, the slime bag, pustulant oh. sore that he is, kills Teft, and it breaks Kaladin. It, but Kaladin just sort of harnesses that rage. Well, that's the thing. It, I, w- it would have broken him. Moash mm-hmm. gave them very specific instructions. Mm-hmm. And don't, they didn't listen. don't do anything. Uh-huh. You gotta Don't just let him, him break, and, but the the pursuer, pursuer just can't it. leave well enough alone because he has yep. his tradition that he has to hold up. And then, oh. then Kaladin <laughs> stands up, full of righteous indignation, fury, and storm itself. And for uh, and honestly, the only oh. soundtrack I can think of for this moment is Trogdor. <laughs> 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 He just and just goes ham. And Kaladin ends his career. Well, yeah. first he ends his you know, his his life. Then he ends his career, which is yeah. the interesting order. But the fact that he decapitates him with gravity slowly, just like, and walks away as it's happening. He's like, "Cool guys don't look at decapitations." Nope. Apparently. <laughs> It's like the explosions, you know, where they walk away and then there's like a exactly. What was the name of that little kid it, that we have two perspectives oh, from? A- like Aiden, his, I think it was. A- oh yeah, something like. I'd that. like to think Aiden was watching that and just like sort of just. Be, <laughs> that, that was totally wicked. Yeah, that, that horror, like That's just incredible. that weird, sick fascination only little boys can have with the truly violent <laughs> things. My yeah. my son will play Minecraft, and all he wants to do is he, he loves to build things, but he also loves to spawn lots of monsters and then just like kill them. And I, mm. yeah, we just worry when it's like you, you need to stop talking about it so much. <laughs> Should we be worried about this? Well, that's that's he's little still nice to, bo- that's he's, little boys. He's still nice to the dog, so they, they okay. want to bu- they want hope. to build things up and then they want to tear <laughs> them down. That's what little boys do. That's what they do. Yeah. Now, at this point, we're in full avalanche mode. Oh, yeah. Um, Like, just everything's going down. And then they take Lyrid. And, you know, (laughs) Kaladin has just sort of, has just seen his father actually with the Shash brand on his head in support of him. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, oh, no, not now. Not this time. (laughs) Well, that's when Dalinar 
does the it hits pause apparently. Mm-hmm. Well, well, you know, Kaladin goes up after them and they're on top of your ethereal. So he's like the top of the highest tower. You know, it's like all of the epic moments have been building up oh, to yeah. this and they drop him. And Kaladin steps off the edge. And this is apparently the scene that Brandon has been waiting for two Years. decades to oh, write. Man. And he dives off and he's sort of breaking. And Dalinar is riding the Stormfather. <laughs> And comes by and he's like, hey, you know, can you do that little pause thing? And they have a conversation (laughs) with Kaladin and it doesn't really work. And so they pull him into a vision of something that. It wasn't a vision that was prepared by by Tanavast, you know, which we haven't seen before. Typically, the Stormfather is just replaying visions that Tanavast has given him. And Dalinar pulls him into a vision of Tian. Oh man. Of Tian's last moments. Of Tian's last moments. And I just remember like I again I was blubbering through this whole scene. Mm-hmm. Because it at the moment when Tian looks at him and sees Kaladin. And I just got chills because it's just like holy cow just this mo- he gets this moment he he gets the moment to say goodbye and for Tian to say it's okay mm-hmm. I'm okay because because Tian's like more grown up and part of it too uh-huh. so he's not just a little boy the whole time there's because he's and I doubt Dalinar really even fully understands what he's doing no. he's clearly tapping mm-hmm. something into spiritual connection that allows this mm-hmm. thing to occur and yeah I don't think we'll ever get it explained just because Bondsmith powers are weird. They just, mm-hmm. they, yeah, they're their thing. There's something metaphysical. They somehow get to edit metadata in reality. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> it's just, it's odd, but it's such, it, it, I mean, I don't, I'd like to see the person who doesn't cry reading that scene. Oh gosh. It, it is so good. It's so beautiful. Mm hmm. And then finally, after, you know, having this conversation with his little brother who he lost Mm -hmm. and whose loss kind of triggered his tumbling descent. Well, his his pathological need to save everyone. Well, it was also this was the brother who was able to bring him out of his depression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just talking to him. it, It brought light to him. It's I mean, and, you know, all his problems descend from this moment. Mm -hmm. because it's why he refused to go back home he couldn't face his parents after failing to save Tien right it's it's why he kept trying to escape as a slave but and trying to break out and trying to save everyone there because he he had to save them it's why he kept trying to save every single little boy that was in every other platoon Mm -hmm. it's why Oridin being born brought him to to tears yeah when he first yeah. saw his family again. And so it's just, this was the thing that made it, this is why he couldn't swear the fourth ideal was because mm-hmm. he had to come to grips with the fact that he can't save everyone. Yeah. And I just, I love that Tian is the one who's able to get him past that. Mm. Um, and say the oath that everybody has been speculating on for so long. <laughs> he says, I accept that there will be those I cannot protect and Dalinar is the one who says these words are accepted. Yeah. We don't know what that means yet, but that means something. (laughs) And so, you know, that, that, that's going to come back in book five. Yeah. Yeah. Because for Dalinar to be able to be the one to accept those words, there's something big going Mm -hmm. on here. Yeah. Also, then Kaladin gets his shard plate. And he can apparently project it. it, it it's very it's um, cool. Iron Legion. It's it's very mm-hmm. Ar- Iron Man 3, the modular armor. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Where he's able to send it and it wraps around somebody else. And let's Aiden mm-hmm. field goal punt a singer. <laughs> <laughs> yep, the random kid oh, gets his Oh, man. Moment. Now, is this all Windrunner shard plate? Is this all living shard plate? Is this just Kaladin? We don't know. We don't know yet. I mean, we, we've, we've glimpsed Yasna's, but we haven't seen we don't, it really. I would be surprised if all the shard plate acts like this. Just because his is made of uh, of windsprint. Wind 
And so Mm -hmm. I think that this is a nature of what it's made up of lets him. And that's my suspicion that and what his oath is, his oath is to protect others. Yeah. Well, how, how better to protect others than by giving them your own armor? Mm -hmm. Oh, is there? Sorry. Cheyenne says there's a word of Brandon about that. If you can get us a link, let us know. Yeah. We'll have to check that out. If, if you get us a link, we'll put it into the show notes at the, um, for when the episode is yeah, but no, it's a uh, it's it's awesome, uh, and just the scene of him re- actually getting to rescue his father, mm-hmm. like and them having their heart to heart and coming to terms, mm-hmm. and just well, it remi- I think it was Callan who had the lines. Maybe this is the right answer for each other. Yeah, yeah, it reminds me of. I don't want to go into spoilers on this, but it is from season one of uh, Doctor Who, which is my one of my favorite episodes. At one point, he says, maybe this time everyone lives. And it's just, you know, it's like he actually does get that moment of success mm-hmm. where, you know, he's failed at protecting Tian. He's failed at protecting Elokart. He's failed at protecting Teft. But he's able to save his father. Yeah. And his father's wearing the Shash brand. And his father's wearing the Shash brand, mm-hmm. which is huge. By the way, we, there's a lot of talk about, about frustration with Liren. Can we just talk about how awesome Hesina is? I know. It was like she she finds a way to balance supporting her husband, uh-huh. supporting her son, and not just going like, can you stop being mean to each other? You yeah. know, just like I, I kept waiting for her to just walk behind Liren and in the back of the head, just like bap him like an NCIS, you know, uh-huh. and that's not exactly her to do that, but no, but what she does is cause, cause she wears the shash brand even yeah. when he doesn't. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so it's just sort of a very distinct, you know, just like, I'm not shunning him the way you are. So don't even, don't you dare think that it's like, this I'm is fully my, behind this, you on this. this. Is my I will support you as my husband, but this is my son and I am not abandoning him the way you, you think yeah. I should. What's interesting is since we get it from her perspective, we find out uh-huh. who she was, that she was like, she really she took was... a step down to, mm-hmm. to be with him. Like that's how much she loves him. And yeah. it's also the other thing that we see from her perspective is, why does Kaladin have such a problem with authority and he gets it all from his father? Which is funny when yes. you think about it now, because again, but again, losing Kaladin and Tian broke Liren. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, because, you know, Liren was again, pushing back against Rashon the whole time. Well, and apparently and he... did, had quite the standoff with her father. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh man, guys, this Yippee just Kaye. this. There's so much that's going on. We didn't even talk about the uh, Yippee Kaye, Mother Stormers. We didn't, and I love David so much. Did we, yeah, we didn't talk about David. Did we find out that David? I remember isn't a he mute. Was, he was he was such a, yeah. a low key, just background character almost, and then he gets his five minutes in the limelight where you find out that he. He had a speech impediment or it wasn't well, a he's speech- not just a speech impediment was- he's development he's mentally slow yeah that's he's, right he's and slow so he wouldn't talk well he, f- he found it easier to not talk everyone assumes he's mute and mm-hmm. everyone thinks oh it's battle shock he's like well this is easier yeah it's easier to just to function this way than to actually have to deal mm-hmm. with all of the social repercussions of yeah being okay i am when when Lyft finds him, she calls him Mooly the same way that, <laughs> yes. that Lopin does. He's like, oh, crap. Lyft's been hanging around Lopin. Oh, no. I would love to see a scene but just with the two of them chatting because that would be just mm. glorious. I, I so still fun. I just I want I want the scene of Devani trying to to civilize the Lyft. <laughs> Oh, I, speaking of that, the just I love the scene where uh, Navani's meeting with all of the the different orders of radiance, and Lyft is hiding under the table. Mm-hmm. You know, and she's like, "All right, Lyft, where are you?" And she just sort of comes out, and she's like, "All rooms." She's like, "I'm here. I'm right here." <laughs> yeah, she's made like, it. Well, and then Navani and, just sees like you know because she's now at that awkward age where her arms are bumping into things and. Mm-hmm. It's just such a g- great scene of Navani Nivon- just subtly wanting to mother her. All the and, mothering. Yes. 
And I love that idea. It's just like, you know, because Navani lost her son. Mm-hmm. And Yasna don't get mothered no more. No, no. You, you, you don't mother Yasna Colin. She hasn't been allowing Navani to mother her since she was 10. Probably, you know? probably eight, you know. <laughs> and it's just one of those, you look at it and you're like, they need each other. Mm-hmm. They would be so good for each other. And I, just, I, I, I did. I did really like the scenes with the AVR too. Mm-hmm. So she has her little red AVR friend now. She has a chicken. G- Gera, chicken. I think, was the name of the guy. The he, yeah, and it wasn't. He wasn't even from Sixth World, right? Sixth, well, probably. no, he was Farukamist, I think, because he had because he, yeah, had, he had the darker rings. skin, all and the, they, there the were there were tan rings. lines where a lot of jewelry had been. Let's see where it so, was. So yeah, like I need to when I reread it, I'm gonna have to look for all those little details. And he, yep. So yeah. Okay, so apparently somewhere it has been confirmed that he is the Farukamist. The the Farukamist that was close to Dalinar. Yeah. He was hanging okay. out. Yeah. That's what I thought. All right. Um, and well, she faced off with Mraes off screen too. Yeah, that was so the thing. Yeah. So one of the things I liked about uh, David in his chapters, one we find out that you know the hidden depths that he's not just battle shock, and that mm-hmm. he's been paying attention, mm-hmm. and so he's able to help Kaladin uh, do you know like you know lots of things. Yeah, and att- well, intending to the wounded, and you know he's mm-hmm. he's capable of this. Um, mm-hmm. And it's just, it's really cool when he and Relaine and Teft are all together because nice. it's sort of this, it's sort of a reunion of some of the, like, even though Kaladin was in charge, he always felt apart because he had to be, he had, around them, he had to be Kaladin storm blessed all the time. Mm-hmm. With yeah. Teft, Teft was always ashamed of, you know, his fire moss habit. Dabid right. was, you know, they thought he was battle shocked. And, and Relaine is, well, the, the whole basket of, of weirdness that's Relaine's situation. Right. And them getting to come together and start trying to solve this problem. It was just yeah. such a cool little little group. It was none of the ones that you normally think of as the ones who are going to save lift. the day. And Lyft. Yes, and Lyft. But Lyft just always finds a way to worm herself into these things anyway. She just yep. wiggles in. It's fine. Ah. Uh... All right. Well, uh, I'll, we'll we'll give a moment for final thoughts in a little bit. But in the meantime, we do love hearing from our listeners. So keep on sending in your questions. You can ask us about the Cosmere. You can drop us ideas for topics that you would like us to discuss during the show. And while you're at it, we'd love to hear your feedback about how you think we're doing, as well as any interesting theories you might have about what's going on in the Cosmere. You can send all questions and suggestions in a brief, concise email to Cosmere Studies at Gmail dot com. And we could read that as a part of the show. If you would prefer to send us a physical letter, we do have a P.O. Box at the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, P.O. Box 970063, Orem, Utah 84097. We've also got our own personal projects that we work on outside of this podcast. So, Amy, why don't you start us off and tell us what you've been up to and where we can find you. So, my Facebook is Coincidence Cosplay and Props. My Twitter is at Coincidence Cosp because my name is too long. My Instagram is at coincidence underscore cosplay. And now I have even more exciting news because I have an Etsy shop. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. So, what do yeah. you sell in your Etsy shop? Yes. Yeah, so I have an Etsy shop. Um, you, It's just you look up coincidence cosplay, all one word. And that's where I have my dice. I need to have, I still have to figure out exactly how much I'm going to charge for my whole sets of dice. Because I have like three or four full sets that I'm going to sell. But I keep worrying that people are going to look at the amount and go, no, I'm not going to pay that. Because it's, you know what? It's, just... it's, so it's, I'm, I'm, I'm debating that. I need to have my husband look at it and just be a second set of eyes on it. But mm-hmm. I have all my singletons on there. So if you, and I'm always open on my website, www.coincidencecosplay.com. If you want to make a request that way or just message me through my social medias or whatever. If you want like a custom one, I'm open to doing that. Awesome. So, yes, lots of dice. And then there's my husband's website deckplan.io they're still working on it if you like magic the gathering and want to have your own deck plans and things like that then check it out so deckplan.io that's cool me. and jordan how about you uh twitch.tv slash splice stream is still always the best place to to follow me uh, but something that i actually want to uh, bring up i forgot to uh, put in the show notes was the rhythm of war championship title belt i forgot to give everyone the results of it 
Oh, um, yes. Yes. And so I'm just going to go through the top five scores and then just some interesting findings. Uh, in fifth place with 75 points was Clay C. In fourth place with 83 points was uh, Cariolis Z, whose name is really complicated. Uh, third place, Cameron K with 91 points. Uh, so Anton with 94 points. But the winner from our own Discord was Ross with 98 points. Um, things that were sort of funny. Uh, no one got the number of personalities that would verge into Shalon by the end of the books. I literally didn't have an <laughs> option for two. Yeah. I had one, three, or more, and then she showed up with two, and it's just like, well, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> um, very few people got anything right on the question of predict the name of a new world hopper we'll see for the first time. But one person, uh, his name was Moritz, got, uh, he put Restaris, and then he actually put in parentheses, we technically haven't met him yet. And... <laughs> Sure enough, that's fair. we hadn't met him yet. I was like, "Dang it, that's good." Although, have we seen? It? We haven't seen him world hop. We know, we? we know he has though, because that's the whole reason Thadakar is interested in him. Because they're they have a similar situation sure. that they're mm. they're mm. cognitive shadows that should be tied to the planet, but we know he somehow okay. got off, and that was the whole, okay. whole reason he was hunting them down. Um. Okay. Did you calculate our scores from the episode? I did not, um, because that would have taken a lot of time. <laughs> but the most interesting of of all things, I asked, uh, let's see, what question was that? I want to say it was, where was it? Dang it, I have this all in. There we go. Question number 10 was, how many times will storms or storming be used in place of a swear word. And the of and? the official number was 273. And most impressively, one person got it on the freaking dot. And that wow. would be huh. a Anton got 273 on the dot, got the full 16 points Good for job. it. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. And I was just, I couldn't believe it when that came out. <laughs> So I, I, I really hoped that Anton would win it after that, because that just felt like the hardest prediction to make. I mean, yeah. <laughs> he got it on the dot. I don't know what black magic he did in order to uh, achieve this, um, Indeed. but he did do it. Well, congratulations to Ross. And we yes. will get that uh, that print of the chasm feats being sent out to you ASAP. As for myself, I do have another podcast with my friend Dylan. We talk about board games, and it's called The Innkeeper's Table. New episodes come out on Friday mornings, and it's available on all the major podcast sites. So go ahead and listen to us there, or check out our Instagram page at Innkeeper's Table Podcast. We've recently introduced a new format of how we'll be recording and releasing episodes based on which week of the month it is. The latest episode, which was the third episode of January, where we discuss a specific game, was about Tidal Blades Heroes of the Reef, which is a worker placement game with a lot of dice management and incredible art. We, I kickstarted that one two years ago, got the deluxe version, and it's just absolutely stunningly beautiful. Wasn't um, that the one that showed so up we, in like nine boxes, I swear? No. No, was that a different one? It was just one one enormous box. Oh, that's what it, that's um, right. The size of the box was huge. It was it was enormous. The fourth episode of each month, meanwhile, is going to be about miscellaneous topics. And this week we are talking about all day gaming parties. I actually had one of these for my birthday last year. No, not last Two year. Two years ago. 2019, I think. And yeah. and Dylan did one before that. I actually got the idea from him. So it's a really fun concept, really fun topic. So um, as a reminder, the first week of each month, though, is going to be a series called I Enjoyed X. What should I play next? Where we recommend games based on what games you may have already previously enjoyed. And the second week will focus on specific game mechanics. I've also got several board game reviews over on www.innkeeperstable.com. And I post about games on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at at innkeeperstable. For those of you who want to support the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, but you can't become patrons, we would love it if you just let your friends know about the show. 
Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and to like and subscribe over on youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies. And if you want to toss us a good review wherever you listen to us, we'd appreciate that too. All right, guys, final thoughts on Kaladin and the fight against Moash Gruber. I'm glad he's blind. <laughs> you know what? No, that's... That was such... We didn't even really talk about the repercussions for Moash. No. But we talked about it more with Nick, with, with Navani's stuff. Cause oh, did that's you? Where, okay. Because we, we talked about how he got... Oh, we did, yeah. He got messed up oh he's he's getting he, he's getting everything that he deserves coming towards him. oh oh there needs to be more but this is a good start mm-hmm. no i no, and then also the repercussions for uh for the pursuer like you said he got his career was ruined yeah oh kaladin ended his career word got around well, he named him the defeated one and it stuck <laughs> oh and now we get to find out who the heck who L- what is it l, l. find out l, who yes. l is so his name was given to someone else. Is that Vire? It's it's either Vire or whatever title was given to Navani, but he doesn't seem like one who uh, uh-huh. brings voices. He seems to be one who silences them. So yes, yeah. I'm willing to bet that he was the one who silences before Moash. And so that'll be an interesting rivalry on their, on the same if it, side. If it's a rivalry from his writings, he seems to be quite a fan of humanity, mm. which is weird. Yeah, but Moash took his name, so who knows? I mean, he may I, not take kindly. All I know is that he saw that someone was disposable, and he's like, "Oh, look, a guinea pig, fun." <laughs> and you're just like, "Oh, okay, well, I don't know who he is, but uh, you know, I don't want to mess with this Doctor Claw-like character. Let's uh, <laughs> not do that." Yeah, it'll be interesting. No, I'm the this whole. The Kaladin storyline in this one was so so real in comparison to a lot of the other things that we've dealt with with Kaladin that it was just it was difficult but it's just it was so cool seeing him you no know, like as soon as danger calls he he finds a way mm-hmm. to stand back up despite mm-hmm. everything yeah. else and that's that's why he's Kaladin Stormbless that this is what yes. everyone knows him as they don't know his struggles day to day, but they know that if if they need help, you know, he's coming. Kind of mm-hmm. it kind of makes me think of Captain America pre serum. Yeah. But yeah. then he but then he actually does have But he does have the serum. So he I mean it's the... kind of yeah, anyway. Sort of yeah. Captain America. No, that's not a bad comparison. Yeah, it's just he doesn't he he won't quit as long as the danger's mm-hmm. there. Like his mm-hmm. most hit for him the most dangerous moments are when it's quiet. Yeah. Well, and it's it's also, you know, he has the depression and it's not that the depression goes away. It's that he's given the strength to handle it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just a, it's a completely different concept of it. he's not cured. He's just given the support that he needs yeah. to, to do it anyway. And the, the other thing we didn't really get to cover, but look, there's a lot of episodes ahead. Uh, we get Leshwi doing her uh, her heel face turn. And oh, yes. and so we'll actually talk about that during. Vinny's yeah. So episode, so, so Lesh yeah. Leshwi Kaladin shippers, you have a chance. Kalesh <laughs> I want it to happen. Oh. <laughs> it just it flows so well. Oh, so uh, in addition to the live episodes of the show that stream on twitch.tv slash innkeepers table every two weeks on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, listeners can find our videos on YouTube or audio versions of the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and just about any other service that carries podcasts by searching for Cosmere Studies. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the profile at Cosmere Studies. And if you have any questions, feedback, or suggestions for the show, email them to cosmerestudies at gmail.com. For our next episode, we'll be taking a look at the feature perspective, featured perspectives from Rhythm of War, where we talk about Vinley and Eshenai. So join us for the live recording in two weeks on February 1st, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern at www.twitch.tv slash table. Until then, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, thanks for listening. And remember, there's, there's always, always another, another secret. secret.